Hello there my fellow Holotable heroes and welcome to another Swagger video. So I'm back here with another Grand Arena guide for you. So in this one I want to talk through the teams uh, that I'll be using on defense and offense in this current 5v5 Grand Arena season. Now I know I'm a bit late with this video so apologies for that but my hands were full with all the conquest guides uh, that I was creating and we've got another conquest starting on Monday. So if you're interested in that, uh, I'll be creating another kind of update video before the new conquest starts, just like, you know, what's new, what discs uh, should you be looking out to, to collect, as well as I'm preparing a top secret daily uh, conquest plan uh, for you to follow. But anyway, more about that in another video soon. Let's get now into today's video where I'll be talking through the teams. First, I'll cover the teams that uh, I'll be looking to use on defense and then we'll do the offensive teams as well. So starting first, um, got Maul team. So the whole idea here is obviously you got Maul, you got Sidious. Now if you don't have Savage there, uh, Relic Tap, like Sif Assassin is good, or even Marauder, uh, because then, uh, you know, you don't need to use really Marauder on a Dark Revan team. You can go with HK and Sith Empire Trooper. But I do have a Relic Savage, so put him on there. Otherwise, you know, Marauder probably would be a great choice. And the whole idea with this team is obviously you do get some extra evasion from Maul. Uh, you get 20% extra turn meter to start off. And then Maul and CDS, they got AoE, so they can potentially snipe some banners. Uh, and then as well, you know, you're evading and things like that. And then which leaves one pan nest kind of exposed. Both of these guys can counter attack, you know, wreak havoc, nest, you know, you do have to bring some sort of characters that can deal with nest. And then Wampa, he's got an AoE as well. I do have no seconds eight on him that can apply healing immunity again, preventing, you know, possibly my opponent from recovering banners. So this team by no means won't stop anybody, but hopefully he can snipe, you know, two free banners away. So that's a win in my books. Uh, up next, we've got new gun ray team. So similar like Mole team. This team really is designed to try and snipe some banners from you. So we've got Newt Lead, we got Dooku. Django here. Django obviously he will start with his contract trigger because he's under a separatist lead which means he will gain extra offense, he will have critical damage, uh, he will have damage immunity for two turns to begin with. Then Drodeca there, I have him at Relic 7 so you know he can do some big hits on somebody as well. And it's always good with this kind of team to have some sort of a pre-taunt here. Now in my case there's a Geo Brood uh, but I, re I realize that for some people that may not be suitable however all of other my Geos there are gear 12. Uh, so with gear 12 geos in my gp range i wouldn't be able to do a whole lot so i can afford to leave geo brood in there if you still want to keep your geos intact uh, another great option there would be somebody like l3 for example uh, because she's got a pre-taunt as well uh, but you know even if you don't have a pre-taunt to be honest here uh, you know enemy will be a little bit confused to go after dooku because he can hide everybody and then jang on Drodeka, they can put some big hits on us so definitely, you know, quite a menacing team heal to deal with, trying to walk away with full banners versus these guys. Up next, we got General Grievous Squad. Now many of us now will have IG Relic Tab because he's required for Executor. So he's actually a great fifth uh, in there uh, with GG, I think. Uh, and that's because once you do slot a Zeta on him, uh, on his unique, uh, what it'll add is that target locked enemies uh, will not be able to recover health and protection. So it's really target locked enemies will kind of have healing immunity on them and as well his basic as well can apply healing immunity further you know stopping recovery uh, on the protection and health for your opponent again trying to you know snipe as many banners as you can and obviously IG-88 is a droid so if you do take him out uh, Grievous will still you know get that uh, bonus turn and things like that and this is great because then it kind of leaves you through deck and nudes there to use with Django and Count Dooku. So I'm definitely, you know, very happy there uh, with IG as an investment overall. On top of his ship, he's now also, you know, a key member here of a General Grievous squad. Moving up next, uh, Night Sisters. Uh, I do have them relic, uh, that's why I use them here on defense. Now I know they're great on offense as well, but you know, Night Sisters in most cases they will give you 55, maybe 56 banners if Night Sister Spirit keeps evading. Uh, that's why I just prefer to use them on defense. I know this is easy trooper food, uh, but then again, many teams are. So, you know, if they use troopers on, on Night Sisters, they won't have troopers to maybe use on another team. So that's okay. They're just how it is in my GP range. Uh, you know, there'll be a team where troopers will just steamroll. And in my case, this will probably my Night Sister squad. Uh, then moving further down, um, 
We've got a Ray Jedi training. Uh, I do love to put both resistance heroes here and BB-8 and R2. And when BB-8 starts off with his wiggle move, then he will get Ray going. Then she can apply healing immunity on somebody for two turns that can't be cleansed. Again, sniping those banners out. And then if both resistance heroes, they get going. Obviously, you've got counter attacks. You've got assist. Inspired is spreading. It's definitely, you know, this team... I'm not saying, you know, it's it's going to be meta changing, but you know, you do have to take something decent against it, uh, you know, to good, get some good banners. Up next, uh, I do have now Relic Free, uh, Beskar Mandalorian, that's because obviously, you know, he's a key member there of the Executor uh, fleet. So I do have him under Relic 3, so I might as well just use him there. And then just kind of added Bo-Katan again, she was needed for Master Kenobi, got L3 as a pre-taunt. And then the final two slots, again, we know we got all these bounty hunters relicked up now. So I just started to, to slot here Boba and Bosk. There's counters as well, so there's definitely some synergy between these guys. Uh, hopefully they can snipe some banners away. Obviously I could just go, you know, with Bosk, uh, Boba, kind of bounty hunter lineup, but my Grief and my Mandor gear rate. So my bounty hunters aren't really that good, the ones that I do have them leveled up. So I thought, you know what, just combine these guys and hopefully, you know, they can do some damage here. Uh, I don't know, uh, it's the team I'll be trying out, so I'll definitely be looking at GC history to see how this team is doing on defense. But at least, you know, it's not kind of like an easy team to just quickly run over, like Relicate Boba, he can do some big hits on you. You obviously have to worry about the taunt there on L3, as well as Bosk, and uh, Bo-Katan can daze your characters. And of course Mando there, his Whistling Birds, you know, can do some good damage and then apply healing immunity. He himself can apply damage immunity on another Scoundrel. So, you know, it's a, it's a fun team, I think, uh, to put on defense. I'll see how it performs. And then, of course, Darth Revan there. I always put Darth Revan on defense and that's really because I keep all of my Galactic Legends for offense, especially now after the nerf. Um, in most cases, all of my opponents have more Galactic Legends than me, so I'm definitely pretty much forced to keep over my GLs for offense, which means I do still have to put some solid teams on defense. That's why Darth Revan is right there. Not much else to say here about Darth Revan, uh, as well, obviously, with Vader and what uh, nerf there. Revan actually became a little bit better on defense than it used to. Uh, now, these two teams here are kind of interchangeable for me on defense. Now, if I'm going up against an opponent that's got more Galactic Legends than me, I would actually keep CLS for offense uh, because, you know, CLS can do some work versus certain weaker Galactic Legends lineup. So, you know, I just use CLS then for offense. I don't put it on defense. For those cases where we are equal on uh, Galactic Legends or I have more, which is almost never, I would put CLS on defense though. But for those cases where CLS is going on offense, I'm putting this thin team on defense. Again, this team won't do a whole lot against anybody However, it's one of those situations uh, that they may snipe some banners away from you because uh, if you take uh, take out first uh, here uh, Vet Han, then Vet Chewie gets a turn, uh, two, two bonus turns. Then if you take out uh, Chewie, then Han right, uh, will get uh, bonus turns. And then if you take out Finn, again, you know, Chewie can get bonus turns. So it's kind of designed in such a way that hopefully they can snipe a snipe couple of banners away. And funny story. Um, in my round one, uh, I was going to play CLS on defense, but by mistake I put this Finn team and this one actually my opponent needed three attacks to clear it again without seeing history, not sure what happened there, but definitely, you know, I think they can snipe a few banners away. Uh, but in cases where I do put CLS on defense, then these guys can obviously join my Galactic Legend Ray uh, for offense. Okay, moving on. Now, ideally I would put uh, Gas here with clones on defense. However, pretty much every single opponent I face uh, in Grand Arena, they do have Master Kenobi, I don't have him yet. Um, so what I need to do is keep my General Skywalker there for offense, so it, they do put Jedi Master Kenobi on defense that I can obviously uh, try and take it out. So I'm then left with clones, and then Commander Soka Tano here in 5v5. She doesn't really have a place uh, at the moment, you can use her with Padme, but Padme doesn't really need her. Um, so I just kind of put her there until I get Master Kenobi as the fixed characters with clones. So you know, because here in this team she will be gi giving extra 50% health and extra 50% defense. So you can imagine how tanky that fives, uh, how fives will be 
after all these boosts from Commander Sokatano. And then while you're busy, you know, going after fives that you don't trigger the sacrifice, then the rest of the clones can do some damage. And hey, if Commander Soka gets out a four sleep, knocks somebody out, that's more banners off the board for my opponent. So I'm just trying it out, see how it performs uh, on defense this week one. Up next, my final team for defense uh, is Hux. Now I put all of these kind of good first order uh, characters here on defense with Hux lead because Supreme the color run in most cases he doesn't really need them he can just wreck anybody really uh, with just supporting cast around him uh, I did this time decide to try the Hux lead instead of Kylo just because of those counter attacks um, you know hopefully uh, sniping more banners out there so that's the defensive squad so now, now let's look at what I have left for the offensive so as mentioned before um, I would either have the CLS team here available for attack uh, or my raid team would be a little bit different. But anyway, uh, let's have a look at my first squad here. So got Jedi Master Luke uh, with the other Luke, Shakti, Old Ben and Hermit Yoda. Now this team is well equipped to take out any Supreme Leader color and comps. That's why I have it set up. If there is a Master Kenobi obviously on defense, then I would have to use Master Luke. Jedi Luke, uh, Grandmaster Yoda, Revan, and Gas, but you know, for the old purposes, of, I've, I just kind of have it like that. Then we got Sif Eternal. He doesn't really need a whole lot in most cases. He's just Sif Eternal and what these three guys that are just kind of placeholder characters. Really, uh, not much else to say. Sif Eternal can do a lot of damage against many teams. Aldo versus Ray now it's becoming a little bit sketchier just because he's gaining more bonus turn meter than he used to. Uh, but you know he can still take care of like gas and cls quite easily then ray here again with some leftover characters i do have my armor up and running so sometimes i would use armor there now with ray just to boost her and maybe you know just do ray armor versus you know some solid opponent and take them out uh, or any of the galactic legends as well and then supreme the color and again this team can take out a lot of ray teams obviously it won't be high banner win but it's the whole thing with supreme the color and he can solo a lot of squads, but going up against other Galactic Legend, it's going to be low banner win. That's why it doesn't really matter if you bring in good first order squad or a bad first order squad. You know, the end result will be pretty much the same. So those are all my Galactic Legends that I currently have for offense. And then here we got Jedi Trevan. This is a very versatile team, can do a lot of stuff. And obviously, you know, I can mix and match uh, Ravan with uh, Master Luke or Ray if I need to, to take out one of the Galactic Legends. Up next, I actually, I used to always put Padme uh, on defense, but then I look at history, in a lot of cases, my opponent would just solo them with Malak. Uh, so I just decided maybe this season to try and keep Padme for offense instead, uh, because it's a very versatile team for offense. And on top of that, it seems like we will be having a lot of feats uh, connected with Padme, Jen and Itanakin in this upcoming season. So definitely want to keep them for offense if you want to go after those feats. Up next, uh, Treya. Again, Treya, you know, not a top-notch team anymore, but still against, you know, teams like Padme, can take out Grievous or any of the those annoying Newt squads or things like that. We can definitely do some damage. Very versatile team there. And of course, <laughs> versus those pesky Geos or Mon Mothma teams that everybody put on defense, you know, Treya can be very useful. Finally here, just ending towards the, the end of my offensive list, uh, we've got Troopers. Again, troopers, once you add Piet to the mix, become really powerful. They can take out a lot of uh, teams, you know, that are not Galactic Legend, but all those kind of, you know, bounty hunt. Now everybody's got Relic Bounty Hunters or Night Sisters. These guys can easily take care of them, as well as Mon Mothma teams for, you know, quick and easy 60 banners. Up next, not sure really anymore what Vader will be able to do here without, you know, weapon tech boost and as well his Sculling Blade on top of it was nerfed as well. Um, I was thinking maybe to put Palpatine on defense as well, so see how it goes. For now, fine, I'll just keep him on offense because we need Vader for a lot of feats, uh, looks like this season. Otherwise, this team would definitely be uh, on defense, I think, for me. Um, then we've got Mon Mothma. Now, Mon Mothma there is really... Uh, kind of easy 60 banners versus many kind of you know those C grade teams that are usually hiding at the back I do have it kind of as a backup 
as a last resort if I have nothing left for a Grievous squad. But I'm yet to fully successfully defeat Grievous with my Mon Mothma team uh, in 5v5. Uh, maybe just my mods or Relic Levels are not good enough, but just kind of like a la last resort, you know, kind of a b plan B. And finally here, um, I'm j I'll just play around, see if I can do something like that, because for example, if I do have John Skywalker left over, if there was no Master Kenobi, uh, or uh, on there on defense, I do have now all these Jedi, you know, that we had to kind of uh, relic up like Quagon and Alia for to unlock Master Kenobi. I have Barris, and I do have now seven star Kiadi Mundi. Finally, after like what two years, um, so you know, Kiadi Mundi with all these Galactic Republic Jedi gives a nice boost. Plus, you know, you'll get plus 30 speed from Kiadi Mundi, plus 30 speed from Qui Gon lead. So all these guys will have plus 60 speed, which makes them quite fast out of the gate. Uh, but obviously with reduced damage for General Skywalker, I'm not sure how much damage these guys will be able to do. But you know, Kiadi Mundi from his unique uh, will also give extra offense to all these free support characters uh, here, Barrys a healer as well. So you know, I'll give it a go, see if I can do something with it. I'm not sure, just trying to see, you know, what's the best way to use all of these. Uh, relic characters that we have to have to unlock all these galactic legends as well as executor all right guys so this is the list that i start i will start off in uh, week one see how things go how things progress i might make a small adjustment here and there but as mentioned in the beginning of the video pretty much all of my opponents got more galactic legends than me and they do have master kenobi as well so i'm pretty much left with no choice if i do want to ensure a full clear in every single round that i keep all my Galactic Legends for all fans. Because in anyway, for me, it's not really that important to win and lose. I just want to full clear every time because for me, there is nothing more frustrating than not being able to full clear. All right, guys, hope you find this video useful and helpful uh, that I show you my teams that uh, I plan to use on defense and offense in the upcoming season. Let me know in the comments below or on my Discord server. But until then, have fun, enjoy life, and may the RNG be with you, my friends.